New Spider-Man 2 info expected soon. Microsoft expects PS5 Slim this year. Sega was confident in beating PlayStation in 1995. And a story leak for Silent Hill the short message. All that and more in today's PlayStation news. Let's get to them. Sony officially unveiled Marvel Spider-Man 2 gameplay at their showcase in late May. Now we know when we are getting more info on the game. Marvel has announced that Insomniac title will join Marvel Snap as the two games they will feature at the San Diego Comic Con this July 20th through 23rd. We don't know what they will show as they only ask fans to stay tuned for more info, but both Peter and Miles voice actors Drew Lowenthal and Nadji Jeter will be there, so maybe we'll get a bit more gameplay or a new trailer. It's the only PlayStation Marvel title, so don't expect anything about Wolverine. Sony has been expanding their partnerships with Asian developers with programs like the China and India Hero Projects, but now the company wants to add more Korean talent. MTN Korea has reported that Sony is looking to invest in Pearl Abyss, who is making the upcoming Crimson Desert, NCSoft, who develops MMORPG Blade and Soul, come to the developer of mobile games Summoner War, and NeoWiz Games, who will publish Lies of P this September. An example of this could be Stellar Blade from Korean developer Shift Up, launching later this year for PS5. Sony has been successful in expanding their partnership to more Asian markets with the likes of MiHoYo for Genshin Impact as well. It's also interesting they are looking into some mobile game developers as they are still shaping their strategy on that front. Sony may be looking for more Asian partners, but their presence at TGS this year is staying the same as the past few years. According to the Xbox Vitor list, the SIE segment will only include an indie game area, which is what they have been doing for a few years now. And that's despite having huge launches like Spider-Man 2 or Korean PS5 exclusive Stellar Blade also launching this year. Sony had already confirmed it won't be part of this year's Gamescom either. The Japanese company is going at the beat of their own drum and they rather show games when they are ready, while also making huge marketing savings by not participating in this event. But it's cool that while they won't have a huge presence there, they still support smaller partners giving them a space on the show floor. Tokyo Game Show 2023 will still have presence from the likes of Capcom, Square Enix, Konami and even Microsoft, running from September 21st to the 24th. Speaking of Microsoft, more stuff is being dug from core filings in the recent case against the FTC, and the Redmond company is expecting a new PS5 model to launch this year. The file indicates that Sony sells a less expensive digital edition PS5 for $399 with $99, and is expected to release a PS5 Slim later this year at the same reduced price point. Microsoft even expects a PS5 Pro with the file suggesting Sony is anticipated to release further differentiated Pro and Slim models in the near future. We have had these rumors for a while now, PS5 Slim may not be slimmer but rather feature a detachable disk drive and is expected to launch this fall maybe alongside Spider-Man 2. Another hint that PS5 quote unquote slim may be the current deals the console has in Europe with a 100 euros discount of the disc model, which may indicate Sony's efforts at the playing current stock are starting since they have not struggled moving consoles this year to offer a discount that big all of a sudden. PS5 Pro however seems to be aligned for a late 2024 launch, while in the middle of both will be getting Project Q which Microsoft also listed in the core filings, as they expect the PS5 handheld to be at less than 300 bucks. Moving on, a Sega document from 1986 has leaked and it shows how the company was very confident in its fight against Sony's original PlayStation. An entry shows an email sent from Sega America's former CEO Tom Kalinske regarding the success of Saturn in Japan, indicating that he visited 10 stores in Tokyo and they were killing Sony. In every store Saturn hardware is sold out and there are stacks of PlayStation, the retailers commented they can compare the actual sales rate because Saturn sells out before they can measure accurately. Given how their hardware and software displays were better, Sega expected the same success when the console eventually launched in the US, and they even went above and beyond during the E3 of 1995, cancelling its September release and making the console available that same day. It was a surprise move that may have created hype among fans, but absolute chaos for Sega's third-party partners and retailer chains. It also didn't help them that Sony capitalized in terms of price, announcing the PlayStation at $299, $100 cheaper than its competitor. $2.99 Popular horror game leaker Dos Golem is back again now with the synopsis for Silent Hill The Short Message, an unannounced game registered for PS5 in the Taiwanese ratings board last year. The synopsis has light spoilers but still spoilers, so if you don't want to know anything about it, skip ahead for more news. The game will tell you the story of 17-year-old Anita who is invisible in her class, but she has one friend named Maya who she's known since she was a kid and makes time for Anita when no one else will. 
However, more recently Anita and Maya have been growing apart due to Anita developing destructive habits such as looking at choking things on the internet, slitting her wrist, and more. One day to the shock of the class, Maya is found dead having committed suicide. Anita, with her complicated emotions, her own struggles, and suicidal feelings, decides to visit the place where Maya took her life to better understand what she was going through. Anita will be shocked once more when someone is continuing to post on Maya's social media after her death, and she is curious and determined to learn the truth. Dos Golem also pointed out this is the story as of 2020, so if the game is not cancelled, it may change when it comes out. Silent Hill The Short Message was thought to be a PT spiritual successor given that the game was expected to have a similar playable teaser and use an SMS mechanic planned by Kojima for his Silent Hill game. The Short Message, however, was not in the Silent Hill 2 stream where we got the Silent Hill 2 info last year and has also been deleted from the rating boards it was registered, although Dos Golem had said this could be a case of the game shifting its release date for later. Now time for some quick fire game news. A Last of Us clone has appeared in the Nintendo Switch store called The Last Hope. The game is said to have a captivating plot and immersive graphics. The story says that you take control of a soldier sent back in time to stop the zombie apocalypse and he is Eva's father, with the main imagery evoking Joel and Ellie. And the game's star screen is similar to The Vision for some reason. Sadly, the eShop suffers the same issue as the mobile marketplaces where there's no curation and anything can pop up for a quick buck. Speaking of Nintendo games, Pixel Junk Eden 2 has already been there for a few years now, but will be debuting on PS4 and PS5 later this year. The sequel for the original PS3 game will join Pixel Junk Scrappers as part of QGames 15th anniversary celebrations launching for more platforms, and executive producer Dylan Cuthbert also said there's more in store for fans of the Pixel Junk series. Leaving stores this December is Friday the 13th as the license for the game expires. Given that developer Elphonic and publisher Gun Media have announced the game received its final update this July 6, where all players will get all 30 legendary perks, challenges, and kills unlocked, plus everyone will be level 150. Those don't include any DLC, but the game and all its content are now permanently discounted at 5 and 1 buck each, respectively. Friday the 13th will be listed this December, but its online functionality is expected to run for at least another year. Next up, we have another hint pointing out the existence of a Red Dead Redemption remaster coming from parent company Take Two. Fans have looked back at the company's investor call from May, and they found they told investors that they would be launching two new iterations of previously released titles in fiscal year 24, which means before March 31st, 2024. One of them is Red Dead Redemption, while the other could be anyone's guess. Sticking with Rockstar, everyone is waiting for them to announce GTA 6 and the hype is so high that people are looking into resumes and contacting actors to learn any news about the title. This has made voice actress Leslie Juve announce on Instagram that she's not in the game. She posted in a story, I'm getting bombarded with messages on the new Grand Theft Auto game, I'm not Lucia you all, I'm Xenia from Far Cry 6. Stop messaging me people lol. It's believed a GTA 6 announcement should happen soon given Take 2 expects their 2024 fiscal year to be very, very profitable. Moving on, we know the release date for EA Sports FC, the first EA soccer game without the FIFA license. According to reliable leaker Will Will Kuhn, who does the PS Plus leaks, the title will hit on September 29 with a standard and ultimate edition listed. The latter will offer you the chance to start playing a week early on September 22nd. Besides that, there will also be the usual 10-hour trial for EA Play members. So far, we only know the logo for EA Sports FC, but the publisher is expected to reveal more about the game this month. As part of marketing, EA has also partnered with the Spanish La Liga as the new sponsor, providing graphics and advanced metrics to improve the watching experience. Plus, the competition will be called La Liga EA Sports and La Liga High Promotion, the name of the tech for the game, on their first and second tiers respectively. Valorant might be coming to consoles soon as per a new job posting over at Riot Games. They are looking for an associate console playtest analyst who will focus on validation testing of upcoming gameplay experiences for Valorant. The candidate must have played console first-person shooters at a professional level. It's not the first job ad hinting at a console release, but it's the first one that is looking for a playtester, which means the port could be further along in development. It's been a month since Street Fighter VI launched and now we know the release date for its first DLC character. Returning from Street Fighter V, Rashid will debut in the Fighting Ground and World Tour modes starting this July 24. The character is the first of four from the Year 1 character pass that will later include Aki, Ed, and Akuma. And those are the PlayStation stories for today. Come back on Friday for a new video, but remember to share your thoughts on any of these news in the comments below, like or dislike to let me know your feedback, 
check out other videos you may enjoy while you're here and consider subscribing for more on PlayStation. Thank you so much for watching, my name is Joseph, this is Hype for Games and let's get hype!